Hi, I'm Colin Hung here with Healthcare IT Today, and I'm sitting down with one of my favorite people to interview, Dr. Esty Garrity, Chief Medical Officer from Esri. Welcome back to the program. Thank you. I love being on your program. You're so easy to talk to. <laughs> well, thank you. Hopefully, I don't challenge you too much today, but always love talking to you about the latest happenings with GIS and health. We, you were just giving some sessions around some of the fantastic work you're doing with the County of Milwaukee. Yes. Who once again is amazing me with all of the racial uh, information that they're showing on their dashboards to really highlight the inequity so they can deal with it. Yeah. And what they were talking about, which was fascinating to me, was uh, their work with the EMS dashboards and how the response times based on ethnicity is a little bit different yes. and how they're using JS to, to change, help change that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I think it's great work. First of all, I'll say Milwaukee County has always been very forward thinking when it comes to equity. They were the first county in the country to declare racism as a public health crisis. So they've got a track record. Now, in this particular work, it's really based off inspiration from prior work during the pandemic where they used the social vulnerability index to improve the way that they delivered vaccinations. vaccinations yeah. So uh, they were able to spot the communities that had less access, needed uh, different kinds and more messaging, and they distributed those vaccine resources according to understanding vulnerabilities. So that really inspired them to this newer project where they're focusing on time-sensitive um, emergencies, the pre-hospital care, like you said, EMS, mm -hmm and trying to see if there are disparities in the four different time parameters of pre-hospital care. So I'm learning about this myself, but those include the dispatch time, okay. the uh, response time, so dispatching somebody to go to the scene, the time to actually get to the scene, the scene time, how much time do you spend there, and then the transport time to the hospital. Course, right. So each one of these is critical. And in the operational aspects of the EMS service, they all have different um, contextual factors that could make them work well or not work well. Mm -hmm. So they're using super accurate GIS uh, technology to calculate those different times and then compare them to vulnerable neighborhoods and see if they can answer questions about Hey, are we providing our services in an equitable way? What can we do better? And it was really fascinating to see like how they broke that down into the different time, sp uh, time slices because it's not all about getting there. It's not all about the time to travel. You know, I was really surprised about the, the dispatch time. How long does it take for someone to actually dispatch? Yes. Uh, uh, um, and that was where actually some of the biggest disparities or biggest gaps were identified. Yes, absolutely. And, and in a way you can sort of imagine that that might be the case because there's a very um, human factor uh, that maybe, and, and I'm just guessing here, responds in a certain way to, you know, how urgent is, right. is this problem? And that may have to do with training and, um, you know, other aspects of the business that I don't know as well as Dr. Weston, who right. was my guest. Um, but I, I just somehow naturally feel like the dispatch time probably has a lot of, of potential for improvement. But really, I, you know, I'm learning a lot about this area, but uh, it strikes me that, that GIS is very useful in understanding those times and then understanding who are the populations that are, are being served, what are the outcomes look like, um, and testing scenarios you know <laughs> absolutely how can we do better or does this um fire station need to train this one <laughs> right right who's doing well what are the positive ones and let's leverage that i always have to ask you this question what, what are some of the exciting things that you're seeing out there in terms of applications in healthcare for gis yeah oh gosh there's so many but i'll give you two that okay. are top of my list um the first one is indoor gis right okay hospitals especially love indoor gis now, the first thing you think about, and it is probably one of the biggest uses, it's wayfinding. wayfinding. Who doesn't get lost in a hospital, right? <laughs> Especially with the size of them these days, right? Absolutely. The campuses and They're everything. They're confusing yeah. places, and when people are already under stress, you don't want that. So I know this goes to uh, patient satisfaction scores, and hospitals care a lot about making sure people can find their way. It also actually helps with efficiency of appointments and things like that. Uh, but indoor GIS can do so much more than that. Think about asset tracking for not only your fixed assets, but also your mobile assets, your IV poles and pumps and right. your 
crash carts in your wheelchairs, um, being able to track where those are in real time. You can also look at things like dwell time. How long are people hanging out in your emergency rooms or other waiting rooms? And is this acceptable wait times or can you do something different? We can also look at interactions and see, um, you know, like during COVID, is social distancing happening? Right. Or just general infection control? How are people actually crossing paths when there's infection right, contact involved? tracing, exactly. Yeah. And what was the, what are the, what's the other... Uh, What's the other application that's exciting? He remembered. I'm glad uh, he remembered. So the second one is really focused on environmental health. Oh, okay. And environmental health is a surprisingly large topic. I mean, the first thing you might think about is pollution. Right. right? And certainly organizations are using GIS to understand um, pollutants and people's exposures in neighborhoods, um, whether that's air pollution or pollution through the water. But think more broadly about environmental health. Of course, it also includes climate change and its impact on health. Um, when you think of water systems, you can think of wastewater surveillance and what that can do for um, improving our public health surveillance systems. Uh, but you can also think about things like restaurant inspections. That's right. an environmental health problem. How do we keep people from getting foodborne illness? Well, there's a geography component to that and we can help support not only some artificial or machine artificial intelligence or machine learning algorithms to predict which restaurants need to be inspected sooner than others. Uh, I won't say anything more about that, but um, but we can do that as well as digitize and modernize the form of the inspection and getting that off to the uh, inspected uh, party so that they can respond. So all of those different aspects of environmental health and now especially um, understanding environmental justice with the uh, White House's Justice 40 mm -hmm. um, uh, requirements, and uh, the CDC has a new environmental justice index right. that helps us make better decisions about how we prioritize uh, funding for infrastructure assets or uh, just making our populations healthier. Amazing, amazing. Dr. Garrett, it's always so much uh, so, so informative to have you on the program, and it's always so much fun to talk to you. Uh, thank you. You got me excited. I know I said a lot, but uh, <laughs> hopefully people get geography is ubiquitous, and um, and there's so much we can do to improve health. And where can people go to find out more about all this wonderful health in GIS? Uh, well, you can get a ton of information if you go to esri.com forward slash health. Awesome. Thank you for being on the program again. My pleasure. <laughs> this has been Colin Hung with Healthcare IT Today. Thanks for listening and watching.